This episode is brought to you by Bumble. So, you want to find someone you're compatible with, specifically someone who's ready for a serious connection, totally open to having kids in the future, is a tall, rock-climbing Libra, and loves rom-coms with vegan pizzas on Tuesdays just as much as you do. Bumble knows that you know exactly what's right for you. So, whatever it is you're looking for, Bumble's features can help you find it. Date now on Bumble. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about how do narcissists mask themselves in the beginning? And a narcissist will always, you know, put on a mask when they first meet people. That's why they're so nice to outsiders a lot of time, because they're worried about their image to other people. They want to be looked at as this kind, caring, wonderful person. They portray the exact opposite of who they truly are. So how are you going to know you're dealing with a narcissist in the very beginning? Well, one red flag that you have to be aware of is by how nice they are. A narcissist is going to be exceptionally nice in the beginning. And I tell people, everybody's nice in the beginning. You can't judge somebody in the beginning because everybody has their best, you know, face on in the beginning. You'll start to see someone when they start to, as time goes by and, you know, their mass starts to drop and they get comfortable with you. In the beginning, they want to earn your trust. So how are they going to earn your trust? By being exceptionally nice to you. And the narcissist that is after money is going to be the most deadly narcissist out there because they're the ones that are really going to love bomb the shit out of you and go out of their way to be nice to you and, you know, look like they've come in as your hero. What they do is they come in as your hero and they leave as your nightmare, all right? This is what narcissists do because the bottom line is they are your nightmare and they don't have your best interest in mind and their intent is not what they're portraying, but they're going to mold themselves because narcissists are chameleons. They're going to mold themselves into what you want, into what is your fantasy person. So, you know, they'll go out of their way for you. Some of them may even give you money in the beginning and you say, oh, this can't be a narcissist. You know, they're they're giving me money or they're trying to help me out with this or help me out with that. Narcissists that give money do it Because they know there's a bigger return in the end. If a narcissist gives you money in the beginning, you could be sure that they're after something big and usually after something financial because they know there's a bigger return. Maybe they want to move into your house. Maybe they want you to invest in a business. You know, there could be a number of reasons why a narcissist would give somebody money. But you're going to know that they have the mask on because it's not going to be natural, okay? It's going to be too good to be true. And I get these people that come back at me and they say, well, you know, that's not right. You're telling people to watch out for people that are nice in the beginning. And I'm, I said to them, I'm not saying nice. I'm saying over the top nice that is superficial, not natural, okay? And, you know, they're doing things that the normal person wouldn't do. These are red flags, okay? Now, what you do is, you know, if you want to be sure that this person is authentic and not a narcissist, you just, you know, you be aware of the fact that this person is being overly nice and you move slowly with them. How do you kill a narcissist game? By moving slowly with them because eventually the narcissist is going to get fed up, all right? They want that supply and they want it quickly. So the longer you drag out that relationship in the beginning with the narcissist, the more you're going to be able to spot if they're toxic and you pick up on those red flags. But they're going to try to fool you. They'll fool you with fake empathy. They'll go out of they'll go out of their way for you. Some of them if they're after something big and you're sick, they may do things for you. They may buy, you know, cook for you. They may go get your medicine. They may do all these things. 
But again, what I tell people is this is the beginning. You can't judge somebody by the beginning of a relationship. And I actually had a client of mine who was still struggling with a breakup that he had with this woman who came on strong in the beginning, you know, sexed him out, you know, was you know down with the sex with him and, you know, then dropped him and said she couldn't trust him because, you know, he was, you know, she felt like he was still attached to his ex and everything like that. And she dropped him cold. And this is what female covert narcissists do all the time. They try to, you know, win you over or mask themselves by you using sex. They use their sexuality to get you hooked. All right. Get you hooked. And then all of a sudden what they do is they discard you. Why? Because they find something they don't like or they could be talking to somebody else and not telling you. So you're sitting there and you're saying, wow, you know, she came on so fast. She was having sex with me so fast. And then, you know, boom, four months later, she discards me and says, you know, she doesn't want to be with me, that she can't trust me, that, you know, I'm talking to my ex and all this other stuff. And I told him, I said, these are all excuses. All right. These are excuses because what's probably going on is she's talking to somebody else. She was never all in. And you judged her too quickly in the beginning. And he said, well, you know, if she was that, you know, quick to have sex with me, she's probably doing it with other guys. And I told him, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Because what a narcissist does, whatever they do with you, normally they're going to do it with somebody else because that's their pattern of behavior. So the biggest mistake you make is trusting somebody too soon, you know, too fast in the beginning. Trust is earned over a period of time. And so many people get burnt and they say, I see them on the posts and they say, oh, I'll never get in another relationship. Oh, I'll never trust anybody again. And I tell them, I said, trust is earned over a period of time. Just because you got hurt by your prior relationship doesn't mean everybody out there is untrustworthy. You know, just like there's trustworthy people like like you out there, there's other people that are trustworthy as well. So, you know, don't label the whole population a certain way because of the narcissist. You've got to, you know, trust is earned over a time. And that's why, you know, during that first six months, it's a trial period with this person. You want to see if they're consistent. You want to see if their level of empathy stays consistent and they're kind and understanding and they respect you and they text you back in, you know, a reasonable amount of time and they're, they don't run hot and cold. All right. In the beginning, a narcissist runs very, very hot. It's like smoking hot in the beginning, the amount of attention and affection that they give you. But as the relationship moves on and you become like the old shoe or they see things they don't like or they can't get things out of you, they're going to run cold. And why is that? Because now they realize that they can't get something out of you or they got something out of you or now th their interest starts to wane and they're busy talking to somebody else. Now, keep in mind, when you're dealing with the narcissist, they never just deal with one person, all right? Very rarely. So when they were talking to you in the very beginning, they were talking to somebody else. It could have been their exes. That's why they bounced back to their exes because they never broke up with these people. Or they could just be talking to other people and people say, well, why do they do that? They do that because they can. You can't check them when you're not around. And narcissists always want to play their options because they feel today or tomorrow, if something doesn't work out with you, they've got a backup plan. They've always got to have a backup plan because they don't want to be alone. And this is, you know, this is how narcissists try to fool you too, because a common thing that they'll say, and especially the narcissist on the dating app is they'll say, oh, when I meet somebody, I just center in on that person. That is classic game of the narcissist to make you think that they are only talking to you. Classic game, classic bullshit. Don't buy it. And especially if you met somebody on a dating app or online or on social media, that's to fool you and make you think that they are only into you when 
they are talking to other people and they're not going to want you talking to other people. So that's another reason why they tell you that so that you say, oh, they're, you know, they're centering in on me. They're not talking to other people. Oh, I better stop talking to other people. So now they got you where well, you're not talking to other people because they're telling you they're centering in on you. And meanwhile, they're still talking to other people. All right. Don't believe that nonsense. Unless you're in an exclusive relationship, you should always leave your doors open. All right. You're not married. You're not committed. And you don't owe this person anything. All right. Unless you've made a, a you know, commitment with that person that you're exclusive, don't be fooled by these lines of the narcissist. So this is one of the ways that they mask themselves. A narcissist is going to mask themselves too, is they're going to say things like, oh, I don't even know how to use a dating app or my sister put me on the dating app. They say, they try to portray the exact opposite of what they are, Okay. Like, you know, they're like this virgin. They're so innocent. They want to fool you. The whole idea of all this is to fool you so that you think they're genuine. They're innocent. You know, they're not like these players. They're not like, you know, they're not juggling all this other supply. So what are they going to do? They're going to portray that they're this innocent person that and why is that so that you trust them okay they want you to trust them and get your guard down so that they can get that supply all right so when a narcissist comes on really strong really fast in the beginning that is probably the biggest red flag that you are dealing with a narcissist and when of course with the love bombing we all know you know when they start to call you baby big red flag or they never, they never call you by your name. Narcissists that are love bombing you and have the mask on the beginning, they never love to, they, they don't like to call you by your, your first name. Why? Because they're juggling so many supply, they're afraid they're going to screw up, okay? And they really don't care w what your real name is because they're not in for the long haul. They're there to get in, get their supply, use you for whatever it is, and be out, okay? So, you know, this is, these are all the ways that narcissists, they try to mask themselves in the beginning. The other thing too, is they'll say things like, oh, you could trust me. You know, um, if they keep talking about trust or do you trust me? Do you trust me? All right. Then, you know, uh oh, why does this person keep asking if I trust them? All right. That's not a normal thing that somebody would do in the beginning. So they're testing you to see if they have your trust already, all right? It's the same thing as when a narcissist asks you all the time, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? They want to make sure that they've got you hooked. That's the whole idea with that. They want to know that they've got you hooked. So a narcissist, like I said, the way they're going to mask themselves in the beginning is by killing you with kindness, going out of their way, giving you plenty of attention, being consistent with the phone calls and the texts, having you on the phone, you know, constantly in the beginning for hours. All right. Now, remember, what did I say? What's the timing of this? This is the beginning. This is not going to last. All right. Nothing lasts with a narcissist. So you can't judge somebody in the beginning. You have to say, oh, yeah, it's nice. I like the attention. But are they still going to be doing that in six months? Are they still going to be doing that in a year? I won't know that until I give it time. And that's, and I don't give anybody any kind of supply unless they earn that supply. And, you know, people have to earn you. Okay. And that means by showing you consistency over a period of time, this is how you're going to be able to weed out the, the real from the fake, because the, the fake narcissist is going to drop off. They're not going to be, they're not people that can do the endurance game unless they're after a huge supply, which is usually money. There's some narcissists that are scammers that are after big money that can put on this act for a year, okay? And they can love bomb for up to a year and then not ask you for a dime. And then all of a sudden, 
They'll start crying about this, crying about that. And at that point, that narcissist has you hooked. They have you hooked. And you're thinking, oh, you know, they're true blue and everything. Oh, I'm going to help them out. And this is exactly their intent. So a narcissist that, you know, can put on the act for like a good six months to a year is after something big. And that's usually money, you guys. All right. But other narcissists that are after small things, they're endurance. They can't do it. They can't keep up the act long. So you, like I said, the way you're going to know by, you know, if you how a narcissist masks themselves in the beginning is by, you know, looking at their level of niceness. If it's over the top nice, you got to say to yourself, uh, uh, what are they after? What are they after? And if you want to, if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, this is like the kiss of the death. But if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, you could say, okay, you know, they could be a narcissist, but you know what? Just to be sure, I'm going to move slowly in the relationship so that I don't get hurt. All right. So the nicer they are, the more you have to watch out, the more you have to watch out. Because like I said, you know, flattery, charm, you know, showing you attention, all of this is the tool of the narcissist to win you over. When they're nice, they want something. When they're cold, they don't need you. So remember that, you guys. All right. So I hope that helps you. And I'm getting interrupted over here. <laughs> Good morning. And if it does, please hit the subscribe button and please share the podca podcast. Sorry, guys. It's early. Have a great day. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that the Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp one two three and also on instagram the game exp one two three okay and have a great day mm -hmm.